Trell Kane, the Thames Walter Hines Page High School. And is here is a sophomore. She loves painting and writing. Her parents are Lasonia and Paul Kane, and she has a younger sister, Elizabeth. Both Elizabeth and Michelle is active at youth diocesan events, and also all of the events here at the Church of the Redeemer and in this beautiful community. Michelle is a member of the Chartered Community of Youth. She serves on the vestry as a youth consultant, the vestry here at the Church of the Redeemer. And so with further ado, the next voice that you will hear is my sister in Christ, Michelle Kane. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us pray. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. As Reverend Alexis said, my name is Michelle Kane. I am a member in this church and a youth consultant for the vestry. I would like to take a moment to thank Reverend Alexis and the congregation for giving me an opportunity this morning to speak. This isn't my first sermon that I have presented. In fact, this is my third. The first time when I present it, though, I finish with a question. What image are we leaving of ourselves? And seeing how it's not the same crowd, I'll give the same message with a different perspective. Last summer, I went to the first year of Lift Every Voice. This past year, we had about 70 participants overall. Participants from the US, Botswana, and South Africa came together for a week to recognize and talk about different social injustices and reasons for discrimination to not only give us an opportunity to be aware of this, but to give us an opportunity to bring back what we learned to our community. We mainly stayed in Brown Summit for the majority of the week, but we also went to Greensboro to take a tour at the Woolworths, at the Woolworths Museum as a visual aid to a few of the events that we discussed, and to Stagsville to see a plantation. However, today I would really like to talk about my experience at the Woolworths Museum. And I don't know how many of you have, act have actually gone, but I highly recommend it. I have gone to that museum about two times before going with Lift Every Voice. And there is an exhibit called The Hall of Shame which is a narrow, dark hall with very graphic images. I never really did like that exhibit because I always felt like there was someone watching me stare at the photos, try to give them some meaning inside the museum. I mean, to a 10 and 12 year old who wasn't properly taught about the struggles behind the civil rights movement, I honestly thought you have this whole museum showing the achievements of the civil rights movement. Why add this hall of shame to actually show me how hard it was or how much suffering people went through to give me what I have today? I truly didn't understand, and I truly didn't like to look at those photos either. But I mean, who would? There were photographs, some in action, and some were the aftermath. Either way, every photograph was a product of hatred. But as it turns out, there was someone watching me try to piece the puzzle together. And you'll soon see why I said piece it together. Just bear with me. What made this visit to the hall different was my tour guide actually telling the group the names of the pictures and the stories behind the violence. When she was telling the stories, I noticed there was a post set to the side of the hall. And on each of the four sides, there was a full-body mirror. Which, of course, makes no sense, right? A hall of images and some mirrors. 
I didn't recognize it before because I didn't look at the mirror the way I was supposed to. Now, I doubt you're getting the big picture here. So let me rephrase what was actually being seen. Imagine with me here. Here is a narrow dark hall with a dim glow of black and white images on glass. And no matter which image you looked at, every image is cracked or broken or in pieces. Yet it's still put in a way that you can see the scene on the wall. However, there is only one image on the wall that's not cracked or broken or torn to pieces. It's yourself. You see? I was right. There was someone watching me try to piece it together. And it was me. The message that the hall is trying to give to anyone who enters is a message of hope. Because you are in the hall of shame. But your image isn't cracked yet. You can still do something to prevent any more broken images to come into this hall. This past Tuesday, I showed my dad a really, really, really rough draft of my summary for Lift Every Voice. And he only spoke when he made a joke for my misspelled words. But for some reason, the question he was constantly asking me was, why do you hate the Hall of Shame? So we ended up talking for about 30 minutes about this, and, started, and I started tearing up when we came to start talking about Emmett Till's story. For those of you who don't know who Emmett Till is, he was a young African American who was brutally killed just for flirting with a white woman. I don't hate the Hall of Shame. I just didn't understand why a person would hurt another because they were a different race. And now that I know just how real it is, it just hurts. My dad said these images and stories of discrimination have been engraved in his memory. But thanks to the generation gap, my generation either knows very little or enough to get by and turn their backs to it, to this. In the second reading it says, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. In this case, the earthly thing that these great leaders were focused on was justice. And to my generation, Black History Month is one week away from being over. But you know what's not? History. As the youth, we need to go to our parents and our grandparents and listen to their firsthand experiences. <laughs> to learn from the past so we do not do the same actions in the future. I finally got the message, and I'll take every opportunity I get to carry that message with me. So I'm going to remind you all the question I began with. And you don't have to tell anyone or even write it down. But I do want you to think about this when you go home. What image are we leaving? of ourselves.